So chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably not happy with your pharmacy career and you're deciding, hmm, when should I quit pharmacy? If this is you, keep on watching this video. If this isn't you, get the f out. Hey, chances are, if you're watching this video, if you're following my channel, chances are you're not happy about pharmacy. And you're probably asking yourself, hey, when should I quit my pharmacy job? Well, in this video, I kind of break down some of the questions that you should really ask before quitting your pharmacy job. We got a real problem within the pharmacy community. For some reason, if you're not happy with your career, if you want to kind of switch careers in pharmacy, there's this huge stigma that you are a bad pharmacist. And you know what the truth is? It's not only for pharmacy per se. It's just entrepreneurship or things in general. No one likes quitters. You know, in relationships, they say spitters are quitters. Um, in business, hustle or die, trap or die. And in school, you're looked down upon if you suddenly decide, hey, school isn't for me, let's drop out. So in today's video, I'm really going to kind of break down when exactly should you quit a career like pharmacy, right? Because the truth is not too many people on so social media in particular can really talk about this topic. And I kind of want to give you my own two cents of how I feel about this, right? The only time people don't look down on quitters is if you're smoking or doing drugs or anything like that, right? But think about it. In school, people look down at quitting. You're looked at as a failure uh, when it comes to that. In business, <clears throat> there's this hustle until you die type of mentality. Guess what? I'm very guilty of it, by the way. My brand is called Refugee Hustle for a freaking reason. But, you know, people look down on that. When you quit a relationship, you know, maybe that was going pretty well. But on the surface, there were a lot of internal problems. Sometimes people even judge you for that. And within pharmacy, there, when you quit pharmacy, suddenly people look at you as a bad pharmacist when you suddenly want to make a pivot in your life, right? And so you might, if you're watching this video, you might be kind of stuck in your career trying to figure out, hey, where do I go next, right? I mean, should I even quit pharmacy? Although this video isn't really going to cover what you should do if you realize you want to quit pharmacy, um, I want to kind of ask you some questions and kind of share a story that you know, happened to me and some of the questions I always ask myself when I'm trying to, when I'm trying to make a tough decision of when to quit or not, whether it's a business deal, whether it's a relationship or dropping a friend or whether it was something like pharmacy. And so I kind of want to tell you the story, man. Back in 2017, a lot of you guys have probably heard my story, right? Um, December, 2017, I lost a lot of things all at once, right? I lost my job. I lost my dad. Literally that stable career, that that job I could always expect to go to every single day. Uh, it wasn't there anymore. And so it was really kind of a tough time in my life because I was trying to think about, well, you know, do I still want to do pharmacy? I've been thinking about leaving pharmacy for a while. Maybe this is a good opportunity for me to pivot and move and change something, right? And after the stuff with my dad settled in Boston, man, after his like funeral, I spent a lot of time just thinking, reading different books. One of the major books I read was Principles by Ray Dalio. And it was just talking about principles for life. And I was just kind of just really going through 30 year old crisis, man. Um, I wasn't 30 at the time. I was pretty much like 29 years old in like 10 months, but I was really thinking about what, where do I really want to go with my career? What do I want to do with my life? And you know, my gut instinct wasn't be, Hey, let's be an entrepreneur, Kevin. It was really kind of, um, to go the safe route, man. I'm not going to lie. I. I was working on my investment course at that time. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and years into it. And uh, because of last year, I actually finished shooting it. By the way, sh shameless plug, uh, check out kickassinvesting.com. But the truth is that I went on a lot of interviews during that time, right? I was going on a lot of pharmacy interviews and it, it would be really surprising because I got these positions that were really, really good on paper, right? I remember one position, it was really, really far like in Riverside. But um, 
it was this opportunity be, to become an advanced practitioner pharmacist right so that like i'd be working like with doctors and stuff it's one of the highest levels that you can practice at and they were willing to train me for all that sort of stuff and i remember i still remember i, I did a live stream right after on my instagram and i was kind of like you know what even though i have this opportunity in my hand there's something wrong about this like it didn't feel right have you ever, have you guys ever gone through something like that where something doesn't feel right despite it being the dream job i think that sometimes will tell you whether your heart's in the right place or not whether you're on the right path or not right and the truth was i actually want to quit pharmacy for years like if you look at most of my um my bookcase over here a lot of them are marketing books actually a lot of the years that i spent in pharmacy were all toward um really investing into marketing and stuff like that and learning as much as i could about online businesses and um you know at that moment kind of asked myself a th few things and i was like you know what this is kind of like the easy path but i feel like i'm meant for so much more and so i took the plunge man um at the time my really good friend matt tran he told me to um you know that that he was taking the sales course and that the sales course like would be really good for me and you know at first i was like sales why the fuck would you ever leave pharmacy for something like being doing sales or closing and at the time i actually really didn't know what dan Locke's high ticket closer course was right but i took the plunge man and you know fast forward almost a year later am i at fu money fuck no i'm not but i'm so much closer than before and guess what i can live this sustainable life where i don't have to go into work every single single day i get to just run my life the way i want to i have my own uh sales and closing agency i work with a lot of different marketing agencies and i finally feel like i have control over my life so you know it was actually one of the best decisions for me to quit pharmacy and it's sometimes really really hard to find that one pivotal moment and i and to be honest i feel like quitting something like quitting pharmacy is a lot more complicated it's not like there's a perfect moment it's kind of like being what I, I don't know what it's like being a father and stuff like that so there's this usher song called the matrimony i remember jerry seinfeld was doing like kind of the prelude of talking about the roller coaster going up and up and up like with marriage keep in mind i'm not married i don't have kids so i don't know that feeling i can only imagine what it's like but it's kind of like you're never ready to be a father or never ready to get married per se right there's no right time except to do it i think the major pushing point in my life was realizing at that moment when i got that when i had that advanced practitioner type of thing i realized that you know i was always really frustrated with pharmacy i was frustrated how things would never really change right despite my like how much work i wanted to put in despite how much effort i really wanted to do into corporate you know it wasn't worth the frustration and the and the reward was never there you know i was always more of a problem solver and you know it just felt like not people were getting in my way but people just were okay just doing the same things over and over again and i felt like i was spending a lot of opportunity costs or a lot of time in the pharmacy when and when i could be doing something more rewarding or something bigger than just myself right and during that time i really asked myself like five different things while i was in the car there were five questions i really had and today i'm going to kind of break down the five questions that i asked myself in that car and it should help you figure out hey is this a good time to quit should you even quit something like pharmacy or should you quit something like school so if you're struggling like me it doesn't have to be pharmacy but any kind of career or maybe in school maybe you should ask yourself these questions like is staying here keeping me from more rewarding endeavors really focusing on opportunity costs and focusing on the cost of inaction so because so many times we get so caught up on like hey if i do this x will happen but so often we kind of forget what the cost of inaction is so if i don't do x what's gonna what is it costing me right now and for me 
that meant spending. And for me, that meant spending a lot of time uh, in pharmacy. I waited almost 11 years in pharmacy for things to get better, but never did really like the stress and all that sort of stuff. Like I, you know, through my experience, things not got, didn't get better. They actually got worse and more stressful. And I realized that a lot of pharmacists were kind of, we weren't properly represented. You know what I mean? So that's the first thing, man. And the truth was I was spending 40 plus hours just on somebody else's vision that I didn't really believe in that. I didn't really think I was really impacting people the way I wanted to. Sure. I was helping people every single day and sure. I'm so grateful that I was a pharmacist at some points in my life and kind of like the people I got to touch, but you know, it was costing me a lot. And I felt like, you know, if I left pharmacy and pursued this business, this really rare time in YouTube where everything's growing rapidly, where, you know, right now you could just teach someone something that, you know, and become an authority, not overnight it takes blood, sweat and years, but this chance you only get once in pharmacy, it'll always be there. Even though the job market is suffering right now, it'll, it'll always be there. Right? So. Uh, there's that. The second question I asked myself is, is staying in the game, increasing my frustration and is it worth the reward? And the truth was with pharmacy. Yeah. The, I, I could easily kind of go up and up the ranks. Sure. I probably couldn't be doing this YouTube thing anymore, but you know, in, in theory, I could definitely, I could definitely rise up the ranks, but I think a good question to ask yourself is, Hey, look at the people that are 10 years um, ahead of you. And I remember my supervisor at the time, you know, he is a black belt in, uh, jujitsu and stuff. Really cool guy. But, um, man, I just look at all these supervisors and they look so miserable, man, or they look like they've had their dreams robbed out, out from them, or they were just like, they treated people like complete shit not my supervisor because he's really dope he's a black belt he's gonna find me and kick my ass but some of the other people man the higher ups were just like so dry and you could tell like and i honestly i took a look at them i was like those are not my role models i do not want to be like those people right and especially if you're working in the pharmacy look at pharmacists that are 20 years ahead of you are they happy are they living a balanced life and the truth is for a lot of them, no, they aren't sure. There's some, there's always like people that are happy, but majority that I've met and I've met a lot of different pharmacists. Keep in mind, I have a YouTube channel. I talk to a lot of different people. There's a lot of unhappy pharmacists out there so we can learn from their sort of lessons. Right. And the third question I really asked myself is, Hey, is there an upside to quit? And I was like, you know what? Hell yeah. At least I don't have to face this feeling of like dread or dragging myself out of bed or feel like I'm, I'm just wasting my time in the pharmacy, you know, even though things are really kind of hard doing a startup and doing different business models, it's tough, but at least I get to control the life that I want to the way I live it right now. Right. And I feel like I'm adding a bigger purpose by doing more content like YouTube or really helping inspire young business business owners to take control of their life and to really invest within themselves through the different um through the different offers i close for the fourth thing i kind of asked myself you know while i was in that car was hey is this the real cause of my unhappiness and this one's kind of tough man this one's kind of tough because sometimes there's so many different sources of your unhappiness and for me i always wanted to do a few three major things right i always want to be location independent i never wanted to have a ceiling i wanted everything to be um if i didn't make a lot of money i wanted it to be because of me that is my responsibility so i wanted like to have tons of respondent responsibility and i wanted to really impact people location independence and impacting people are probably the most important things but yeah i just wanted to really really impact people. And you know, when you're in the pharmacy and you're dealing day with day and people are asking you, where's the fucking milk, it kind of makes you question like, 
why did I even do this? Right? Like what I signed up for wasn't exactly what I got. And you know, I just, you know, I love dealing with patients. I love helping patients through their problems, but the truth is that's not a scalable way. And so, you know, in my opinion, it was the truth of, like that was the cause of my unhappiness. And I talked to a lot of my friends who, you know, a year later, still miserable. I talked to my friends who saw me go through a transition. They're like, Kevin, you're so much happier now. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm a lot happier now, right? <laughs> Not to rub in your face, but it's true. It's true. So, you know, at the time I believed like I wasn't having any of those things, even though I had the high pay or high pay, like at least in the pharmacy world. Yeah like dude not having control of my time not being able to go see my family whenever i wanted to was a real big problem and not impacting people the way i wanted to was a huge cause of my unhappiness right the fifth question i asked myself in that car was hey is quitting going to make my life better not only short term but kind of long term sometimes we think so much like about the short term right how am i going to Put food on the table how am i going to pay off my loans how am i going to do this right that sort of stuff we can always figure out but sometimes we forget to vision the long-term thing right so if maybe these few next few years i probably won't be making as much as a pharmacist but i'll have a lot more control of my time and when i have a lot more control of my time i can create more assets that will grow maybe not within five years Maybe it won't pay off within that one year, but like any investment, whether it's stock market or anything, there's an exponential curve. Am I investing in those assets, right? Because the truth is when you're exchanging time for money, you are not investing in assets. So for me, um, was it worth it long-term? Could I envision, like I, I eventually, like a lot of you guys, I want to start my own family. I want my own family. I want to spend a lot of time with them but how can i spend time with them if i'm stuck at the pharmacy all, all the time right so those were some of the things i was just thinking about as well right so those are the five questions that really helped me right so if you ask yourself these questions and your gut feeling is telling you yes i need to quit hold up don't quit quite yet now you know that you should absolutely quit and you should be taking steps to be going in that way right but what's next? How do you actually do it? Well, first you need a high income skill. You need a successful business model with low startup capital, because the truth is you probably have uh, loans and whatnot, and you probably have expenses. And if you're, you have kids, you need to make sure they're taken care of right at the bare minimum. And the third thing is you need to make sure what you're investing to is time leverage, because the truth is pharmacists were really, really, really busy right so we want to make sure we're hitting all three of those things if you guys are really interested in kind of business and pivoting out um make sure to catch my podcast entrepreneur next door i'm going to be showing you different people who have kind of broke the mold of having a professional life and did something outside and very entrepreneurial and startup and something beyond just like the typical brick and mortar like hey i want to start a restaurant or hey i want to start a brick and mortar right i really want to kind of show you different business models and there's a business model that really speaks to you you know um run with it right and so and i want to throw a question back to you how many of you guys feel like you want to quit pharmacy or quit pharmacy school or quit college let me know in the comments let me know your biggest barrier of kind of quitting these sort of things and let's have a discussion below if i really like your question i'll feature in my next episode all right anyways guys uh, hope you like this kind of like stand up, like talk video, this kind of like, I don't know. It's like an open mic. Almost. It feels like an open mic. Um, ho hopefully I know you guys like it. Make sure to like comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell. And guess what? I will see you guys later and binge watch all my freaking videos. I'm out. Uh, uh, uh.